So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be writing notes on the screen here and explaining to you exactly how it works. Um, so we're going to be going through chapters two and three in this taster session. So this is essentially an hour and a half out of a full day online live classroom, um, which is a little bit similar to a face-to-face -face tutorial, but obviously we have to work quite hard to uh, get some interactivity across um, the computer. The reason for that is um, if we put you all on microphone, it slows down the system so much that um, we just can't get anything to work. So we're going to start with um, chapter two, which uh, covers interest rates. And the first thing that it talks about is something called simple interest rates. So in a sentence, what is, what is the essential feature of simple interest rates? Yay, not cumulative, don't earn interest, no interest on interest. You're all correct. OK, the essential feature is that you don't earn interest on interest. So let's do a quick example. Supposing I invest £1,000 in a bank and we have 10% per annum simple interest. Well, that would mean in the first year, we'd work out 10% of our £1,000, which is £100. So we would have £100 interest. So at the end of that year, we'll have our £1,000 we invested and £100 interest. So that will be our total. In the second year, this is where things get different. Because it's simple interest, we don't earn interest on the interest. So we don't do 10% of the 1,100. We still do it on the original investment. So we're still going to get 100 pounds worth of interest. Um, and so we'll have 1,200 pounds and so on. So we could carry this on, but it'll get a bit boring. Now, being mathematicians, we like to do shortcuts. So what I'm after is a clever way from getting from our starting answer of 1,000 to any one of the answers later, say 1,200. And we do that by multiplying the 1,000 by something called an accumulation factor. Now, can you remember the formula for the accumulation factor for simple interest? Yep, Kelly, C times 1 plus Ni, uh, 1 plus Ni. So the, the factor, what you multiply the money by, is the 1 plus Ni part, and the C is your initial deposit. OK, so that's thrillingly exciting. All right, I lied. But there you are. Now, simple interest rate is a bit rubbish. And the reason for that is if at the end of the first year I took out my £1,100 and reinvested it, I'd get more interest. And so you don't get simple interest rate in real life. What we get instead is compound interest rates. And they are now called effective interest rates in our course. It's just to confuse you. And we do earn interest on the interest now. So let's do that example again. Supposing we start with our thousand pounds, but this time we have 10% per annum compound or effective interest. So what will happen is in the first year, we'll do 10% of our thousand pounds. So we'll have a hundred pounds interest. So altogether, we'll have 1,100 pounds, just like before. So same as simple so far. But then when we get into the second year, that's when things change. We do earn interest on the interest. So we now get 10% on our 1,100. So we'll actually get 110 pounds worth of interest. Altogether, 1,210 and so on. Okay, once again, we're mathematicians and we're a bit lazy and we'd like a clever shortcut to get from our initial investment to our final value. So what's the accumulation factor this time? That's right. So the factor itself is 1 plus i to the n. But you're right. If you times it by c, that will give you your total thing. So the factor is just what you multiply by. OK. Well, those are the two kinds of interests covered in chapter um, two. Oh, my goodness, Aditya. That is the most fascinating formula ever. Um, let me have a look what you've done there. Yes, that will work. What's the P in front for? Oh, that's the interest stuff. Um, you don't need to add another P there. Yeah, you've double counted. If you do that formula, you have slightly too much. So if you just do one of the P's, it will be good. Okay. 
Right, now in the exam, you're basically going to get two kinds of questions. The first kind of question is, can you accumulate? Now, we've got the formula, it's easy to do. The second kind of question is, can you convert between interest rates? And that's what we're going to look at because that's a little bit more exciting. So, for a heading, we're going to be converting between simple and effective interest rates. Okay, the way to do this is we're going to simply equate our accumulation factors over the same time periods. Now, to do that, I'm just going to stick up a little question on the screen. For each of the following, we're going to find the equivalent effective annual rate of interest. Okay, and we're going to do part one, first of all, where the simple rate of interest is 4% per annum for three years. Okay, now I'm going to work this one through with you just to show you how it happens. So what I've got is a simple rate of interest, and my accumulation factor is 1 plus ni. So our n is three years, and our annual rate is 4%. I'm going to stick that equal to my accumulation factor for my effective annual rate of interest, which you'll remember is 1 plus i to the n. Now I need to do it over the same time period. We're doing three years, so that's why we had three here, so I need to do three years here. Now, when you do your CT1 exam, you will be doing an enormous amount of number crunching, and it's very easy in the exam to make silly mistakes. And so as I'll be going through this um, taster tutorial with you, I will be trying to give you tips to work out whether the answer is bigger or smaller. So when you're in the exam, getting yourself in a bit of a state, you can quickly check um, whether you've got your answer correct or not. So to undo this 1 plus i cubed, the easiest way is to take whatever that answer is and you flip the power. So you do it to the one third. So my question to you is, will it be bigger or smaller? Now I've got a little poll to bring up. So we have a simple rate of interest of 4%. My question to you will be, will the effective rate of interest be bigger than that 4%, smaller than that 4%, or the same as that 4%? you should have said smaller. Now, the reason you should have said smaller is because, remember, effective interest rate earn interest on the interest. And so that will mean it'll accumulate much faster. So to get the same accumulation, you only need a smaller rate of interest. OK, well, let's have a go and stick that in our calculator. And if you do that, you should find you get 3.85% per annum. So our simple rate of interest was 4%, but our effective rate of interest is much smaller because we earn interest on the interest. Well, your turn. I would like you to do part two. Now, I'm going to put up the um, little thing on the screen up here. So can you do the same thing for part two and then tick which box is correct in the little poll? So we always try and make these tutorials as interactive as possible because you learn much better if you're doing something. What you should have found is something very strange just happening. Using the same method as before, 1 plus ni, now we're told it's 3% per annum, so we're working in years, so our n needs to be in years. 91 days is 91 over 365. You don't have to do 365.25, and then we'll stick it equal to 1 plus i to the 91 over 365. All right, now remember, to undo the power, the easiest thing to do is to flip it over. So do it to the power of 365 over 91. And if you do that, you will get 3.03% per annum. I've deliberately chosen this question to catch you out a little bit. A moment ago, we said that effective rate of interest earns interest on the interest. And so it accumulates much faster. And so we said, when we did part one, we said 4% simple. We said, well, it will be a smaller effective interest rate. Why? Because we earn interest on the interest. But here, can you see the problem we've got? We have 3% simple interest, but we've got an effective rate of interest that's bigger than that. So the question is, what's gone wrong? Ah, Helen, well done. It's less than a year. Now, some people get confused in this, and that's why in tutorials we try and pick out things which could cause confusion to sort them out. If you were to plot a graph, 
of the simple accumulation, it would look like that. Nice straight line. If you were to plot, oops, that's a little bit of exaggeration. Let me um, do that a little better. Uh, the effective rate, it would look like that. And they cross over at one year. So normally, if it's for anything more than a year, effective accumulates much faster. And so you need a smaller rate to get the same answer. But if it's less than a year, it's the other way around. So just in case you've never picked that up before, there you are. Okay. So, any questions before I move on and we swap between effective rates?